So I was just wondering if you find that um, besides painting the back, do you also, like if you're gonna put shine on the front, do you put shine on the back as well? So I'm moving the pieces out of frame because of course we have a little bit of wet paint down here and I don't want that to get on the front of the paper. So we are just painting the back. And you could always, if you don't have one of these um, pointed tools, and be careful how I'm, I was about stabbing the earring. It was like a little indention when I went to move it. But if you don't have one of these tools, you can use the end of a brush. It doesn't matter. Just something that will hold your piece in place. That was something that got on the front of that. I don't know what it was. Okay. Last two. And look how cute, that would make a really cute little post earring as well. Like for someone that just says, I just want like a tiny little square, something cute. Um, nothing that's too much or too big. That would make a really cute earring. And even the small squares that make a cute earring. So it doesn't always have to be something so over the top. It can be basic and still be really nice. Or if someone has an extra ear hole, then they can have one of these for their extra piercing. So we're gonna let that dry. I keep saying that and then I keep messing with stuff. So seriously, we're gonna let these dry and we'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. They have dried on the front and the back. And so I was going to wait and do the clear coat on top of the um, the pieces, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a coat of the Mod Podge. And so that way we can seal this and then I can put the triple thick on. That way I don't have to worry about in case it has an adverse reaction to the triple thick, there'll be a barrier in between the Mod Podge and the triple thick and the paper. So I'm just gonna put a thin coat on because what I don't want is for the paper to buckle. So. I poured some more Mod Podge. I had some left, but I didn't want it to clump up. So I'm just using my fluffy brush. You can use any brush that you have. Doesn't take a special brush to put on a coat of Mod Podge. I'm not gonna go back over it. And then this again is the matte Mod Podge. I bought this from the Dollar Tree. So this project that we're working on today, this DIY hardly costs you any money. I mean, you have a dollar in for the pack of paper. You have $3.99 if you use the 50% off coupon for the um, wood pieces. Remember it was a hundred and how many? 130 pieces from Michaels. If you use a 50% off coupon, then you spent what a dollar fifty cents on the pieces. So that's two fifty. And then if you bought the Mod Podge, that's a dollar. So all in so far, and let's just say you bought a bottle of paint, you spent four dollars to make a really cool, unique and individual pair of earrings and you can still make another 60 pair, 65 pair from the wooden bases that you have. And of course, unlimited amount from the Mod Podge. So, so many ideas, so many things that you can do. And what'd be really cool is if you use some glitter also to do some different things with. I'm not a fan of the fine glitter because I just can't stand that it gets everywhere. You wake up the next day, you got glitter all in your hair, glitter in your fingernails glitter in your bra. I mean, it just glitters everywhere. <laughs> it just gets everywhere. So I do like the chunky glitter. We talked about that. So I have glitter paint, but also a hack that I use is I use glitter nail polish. So the Dollar Tree also carries a variety and an array of the LA Colors nail polish. And so you can even use LA Colors nail polish to um, make jewelry. So in case you don't have a Michaels or you don't have a um, Hobby Lobby, near your town something got on my base so i gotta get it off right quick in case you don't have something like that near your town you could always go to dollar tree i'm just fixing it there was a little i don't know a piece of lint or something flew by so you can always go to dollar tree and they have paints there and you know of course you can mix up the primary colors and make different colors but you can always do nail polish so maybe on one of the videos i'll do a pair of earrings with nail polish. I have so many different colors of nail polish and so many different colors of the Martha Stewart glitter. 
um, that I forgot I had. I found down there one day when I was digging for something else in our little craft cabinet. My 14 year old and I, we share the craft cabinet. And plus, you know how they have to have school projects and stuff like that. Um, we have tons of stuff. So we're gonna let this layer, this coat of Mod Podge dry. And after that, I'm trying to decide if I wanna go ahead and glue the findings on and then do the layer of triple thick. Let's see. I'll be back and I'll decide in a second. And when I'm saying I'll be back and then you see me pop up again, literally minutes have passed, right? <laughs> it just may not seem like it because of technology. Thank God for technology, right? So we're going to let these dry and then we're going to come back and I'm going to decide if I'm going to use the triple thick to then do a coat, which means it'd have to dry for 24 hours or... If I'm going to go ahead and put all the components down, let them dry, because technically I don't need to glaze the entire piece. I really only need to glaze around the perimeter of the stones that we're going to be putting on. So we're going to be using these. It's going to be so pretty. Look, I'll just give you a sneak peek. Well, now I'm going to make you wait. We're going to wait it out. Okay, I'll be right back. Hey you guys, so I am back and what I am going to do is I decided I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes first before moving on to adding any embellishments only because also, so the other thing, so I'm gonna drill the holes first in our earrings, then I'm gonna add the triple thick. And the reason why I decided to go ahead and drill the holes even though they may get um, covered by the triple thick, is because I can use the pointer tool to poke through them. But sometimes when you go and drill the holes after you put the triple thick on, it can pull up and I don't want that to happen. So the other thing is if I put the findings on first, then the triple thick could pull around the findings and cause it to cloud and I don't want that. So we're gonna go ahead and drill the holes. I'm kind of nervous about doing this on camera in case they get jacked up somehow, right? But oh well, it sure be as the show must go on. So I'm going to, I think I wanna make this a hook pair of earrings. So I again, I do this on a clipboard. I have been known to go through the table. This is just our raggedy table that I use to do. It's not raggedy, but I mean, we just use it for crafts and working on it and stuff like that. So it's not a fancy table by any means. So I have had a couple of times, <laughs> a hole or two in it so anyway we're gonna um put it on the end Ooh. so i'm just gonna look down the site and see make sure it's straight i'm sure this thing has a reverse hole but i don't know so then i'm just gonna clean it up and then I'm gonna use this earring as a template like we did during the tutorial. So I'm gonna lay it down. Also, I think I'm gonna let the paper, the Mod Podge keep drying a little bit, just so in case it's not completely dry, you know, we don't end up having any paint get off on it. So holes there. And then I'm also gonna do a hole at the bottom so I think what I want to do is flip it around. So I'm going to line up my earring where I already have a hole that we did at the top. And now I'm going to reverse it so I can follow that same hole at the bottom. The Holy Spirit just gave me that idea. I was like, oh, that's so smart. Same over here. So that way it's lined up on the corners. How cool is that, right? Y'all, this handheld drill, you got to get one. It's especially if you do a lot of drilling projects or um, a lot of earrings and you want the hooks and stuff. So we got both of our bases done. I think these are just gonna be so gorgeous. Love, love, love them. So now we're gonna do the bottom pieces. So I did get a little bit of blue paint on here, but because I'm gonna be covering this one with this stone right here, it's gonna cover that up. So I'm not gonna stress myself out about that. Um, what do we say? The show must go on. But I do have to make sure that for that piece, that the diamond is situated that way so that when I go to glue the piece on, that little spot of paint is at the bottom. So.
I'm just doing it this way. And if you don't have a good base, these um, wooden, I'm sorry, like some, let me get it right. If you don't have something to sit and cut your holes and stuff on, the wood can splinter. So that's the other reason I don't like using the um, tools where you can poke through because sometimes if you have an inexpensive piece of wood, then the wood can splinter. I've had that happen before. And then the earrings actually break. That happened to a pair of Mickey Mouse earrings I made and I was so upset. So I'm glad I have the tool now, but I mean, until we get what we can, we work with what we have, right? Sorry about that, let me fix my clothes. Got sawdust all over the place. So again, I'm just gonna go through that hole just to clean it out. So I did the same thing. I used a template for where that hole is and now I'm gonna do the same thing with, with this one. I really like that idea. Now the trick is gonna be those two little baby pieces that we have to do. So those are ready to go for our jump rings. I love it. So if these don't come out like I expect them to when I go to put the hole in them because I have big hands and these are small little squares, I really want them to dangle down that way. But in the event they don't, um, I have a plan to glue them to this piece and just let them dangle that way. So I have a backup plan in the, but I don't know, I kind of like that better anyway. I don't know, let's see. Sorry. Ooh, I don't know. That's cute too. Cause the only thing is once I drill a hole through it, I can't go back and change it, right? Because this is paper, it's not paint. So, I really, I'm at a quandary. I'm wondering if I should let that dangle. I really want the earring to have a lot of movement. We're going in, we're dangling. So in the event there's a hole there, I could probably find a rhinestone or something. <laughs> right, and covered up. Gotta have a backup plan. What do we say? The show must go on. That's gonna be a t-shirt, right? Probably already is. So, God is good, that worked out. So let's clean the little hole up. Y'all ask my husband for a ride to the grocery store because I do not feel like driving. So I'm looking for him in the driveway. I'm like, honey, please. He's probably like, why are you texting me for a ride? You have a perfectly good automobile in the driveway. But do y'all ever just not feel like driving? I don't feel like driving. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna do the last little hole. So now I'm gonna get all the sawdust cleaned up. I'll be right back and then we're gonna to prepare to do our triple thick. I'm not gonna do a pour cause I got jammed up with my little design, my little sunrise design doing that. So I'm gonna brush it on, which means it, um, it'll take a couple of coats and I may have to wait a day for it to dry. But I think that's way better than it getting messed up. But look how beautiful they're gonna look. I'm gonna turn them towards you so you can see them. I really love how they're coming together. What do you think? I think they're gonna be really pretty and then you slide them over a little bit so you can see them. And I think these are gonna be super cute. So that's the plan so far, but then I had these. And so I just am having a hard time deciding because I kind of like the look of that as well. So let's see. Anyway, I'm gonna let these dry for just a few more minutes to make sure the Mod Podge and everything is dry. I wanna get the sawdust off the table so nothing sticks to our clear gloss. I'm gonna shake my triple thick up. So I'm gonna need to give it a little bit to settle back down so it doesn't have, um, get a lot of um, air bubbles and stuff, but I wanna shake it up in case that's why I was getting air bubbles before it needed to breathe or whatever. I'm making that up, but you know, I don't know. We just trying to troubleshoot what was going on with it. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna brush on our triple thick. I realized too that part of the problem might've been because the last time I used it, my brushes were damp. I had cleaned them off from, um, 
haven't painted with them. So I'm gonna make sure I get a really good dry brush. So let's use this one. And then of course, you know, I'm working on these plates. I get plates from the Dollar Tree because I think they're just so beautiful. So they have, you know, plates, they have the matching napkins. I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit out. I'm not gonna do that dome and technique because like I said, it didn't act up with the triple thick, but it acted up with that Dura Glaze stuff. Stuff, see. So anyway, I'm just gonna do a thin coat. I'm gonna work around the hole. And it dries really fast, so I don't have a lot of time to be lollygagging. That's a Southern term for farting around, which is code for I need to hurry up. Because the layer is going to be so thin, it's going to dry quickly. So guess what, y'all? So I have one more cabinet door to um, take the paint off of to strip. And then one more drawer, and I'll be ready to sand these cabinets we're working on because I'm like, oh, these things stink. It's the stuff that you use to strip it with. It has like an orange kind of chemical smell to it. it. Smells like bathroom deodorizer, like ugh. But anyway, I'm having so much fun working on it. I think they're gonna come out really great. So we got one coat on of our gloss. We're gonna sit that down to dry flat. I'm gonna do the next one, fix my sweater. It's kind of chilly here today in North Carolina. I don't know what part of the country y'all in, but I'm like, uh, where's the spring weather? Which I guess it is spring since it's in the 60s or 70s, but y'all know how it is in the South when it's like less than 80 degrees, 90 degrees, we're freezing. I'm like, what the heck happened? So, and I'm so ready to go to the beach, but I'm not gonna be one of those people that's going anywhere early, honey. They can have that because I'm gonna be safe and I'm gonna keep my family safe. We haven't even eaten out. I mean, in weeks, my mom, not even weeks, it's been a couple of months. My mom brought my children Waffle House. I think she's done that twice. I'm like, mommy, um, they're not eating out. But y'all know moms, they do what they want to do. <laughs> but I personally have not eaten out in at least two months. And I haven't missed it either. Um, I cook almost every day and I love to cook. I feel like cooking is my love language. What's yours? Do you know what your love language is? And have you been cooking every day? If so, what's some of the stuff you've been making? My kids say that spaghetti is like my fail safe. Like when I can't think of anything else to make or to do, then I end up making some spaghetti. But I'm like, uh, spaghetti's good whenever. <laughs> but that's because I love spaghetti. Can y'all let your dad in for me? Sorry, y'all. We lock Marvin Price out of the house all the time. And I just saw him pull up. He gets so annoyed. He doesn't act like a lamb chop when he's locked out of his own house because we locked the screen door. <laughs> oh, it was open that time. Okay, so we're doing the, um, thank you, Kayla. So now we're just adding the triple thick glaze. And of course, we're gonna let it dry between coats because I wanna see if I'm not impatient with it and by not doing the doming technique, how long it'll actually take to dry between the brush on coats because this isn't how I normally do it. But I'm feeling optimistic. Actually, I'm copying KUnity77 because she said she never has issues with her triple thick. And I normally don't either, but like I said, the last time I poured, I had a lot of bubbles and I don't want that this time because I want this pair of earrings to come out. Perfect, darling. So we're gonna do that. You couldn't find any fish, honey? My honey bunny went out to look for some fish and he couldn't find any. Ooh, sad face. So, he loves fried fish, but y'all know that's probably a Southern thing too. So, but I know a lot of New Yorkers too that love fried fish. I guess it just depends on where you grew up, how you grew up. And we lived in Virginia in the DC area. Shout out to the DMV. We were there about 14 years. There was this place we would go to on Friday nights called j and Seafood in Woodbridge. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It was the first time I ever had fried fish and I added mustard to it. Oh my gosh. I'm like, where has this been all my life? I think that's a Florida thing, but I don't know. Do you add mustard to your fish? So this is the last one, and then we're gonna let it dry. And I used a really dry brush this time, so I'm gonna see if that's gonna make a difference. I'm excited about how the holes came out, how the paper has adhered, the back color is really pretty. 
And I love that you can take, now these are square shaped, but I love how we can put these on an angle and make them diamond shaped, because I don't like square shaped earrings. I have some rectangles that I bought, and I'm like, why did I buy those? Because I don't like squares. I mean, I don't like rectangles, and I don't like squares, but I do love diamonds. So I think the diamond shape is gonna be super cute. So we're gonna let this dry. Let me just touch it by this hole, but it's already starting to dry, so we don't wanna do too much because triple thick can be unforgiving in terms of it'll cloud up on you and there's no way to fix that. Even if you re-pour, it'll still be a little cloudy. So I noticed that they're all starting to get tacky dry anyway, so we're gonna leave them to dry and then We'll be back, okay? Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's get this earring finished. Oh my gosh, you know that making jewelry is a process. So the things we're gonna need to get finished today are, thank you for sharing videos, talking to my son, are the E6000 glue. You, you see I took the cap off, Lord, I'm already wasting glue. We need our flat nose pliers so we can attach all of our jump rings. We got all of our components are dry and ready to go. We have our components I showed you yesterday. So let's get to gluing. So, we're gonna use our, the largest ones. I'm just gonna peel the white pieces off the back because remember I told you these are stickers and so, wait a minute. By them being stickers, you wanna take that white piece off the back because if it dry rots or something like that, especially if you're selling the earrings. Now, if you're keeping them for yourself, you know, maybe you don't have to go through all that, but I say, why not go do the extra step while you're doing it? So this is the top of my earring because I chose the, to do it with the pink top. So what I'm doing is I'm going to place the diamond on there and I'm just going to press it down and I want to line up the points on the diamond stud with the points on the diamond itself. So let's keep gluing. And I love, these are my favorite um, little stones I showed you yesterday. I get these from Michael's off the aisle where all the stickers are. I may go get some more this weekend, but I personally love these shiny ones. I don't know, they remind me of diamonds. They're really pretty. And um, they have a really great bling that over time, like I have some I made before that I kept for myself. And over time, you know, they keep their shine. They look really great. And these earrings, you know, you're gonna be able to wear them dressed up or down. So let me make sure I got everything lined up properly. So it's symmetrical, just kidding. That's an inside joke between my daughter and I. So now I'm gonna go with the next size stone. And remember I told you I have to cover it where some blue paint got on that little piece right there. So I'm gonna make sure I situate the stone where that's covered up because this is paper um, on this earring. So it's not like I could use paint and go back and touch it up or clean it up. So got that one on super cute and I think I also want to add some of the gold um the flat gold um studs I was telling you about as well so trying to move fast because I realize this has been a long video it seems like all my tutorials are so long good gracious but I want to be detailed I mean when we I'm a teacher by nature and what I mean by that is I'm not a teacher like a school teacher or anything like that, but I'm a teacher and naturally like God, my God given gift in ministry is teaching. And so therefore I always want things to be simple so people can understand them and they can move forward, right? With making a decision to do the things they need to do. So I've used the large stone, the medium sized stone, and now I'm going to use, I think some of these clear little faceted ones and these don't have the prisms around them like the others but I think they're super cute so these are our blinged out earrings I have another idea for a tutorial today I'm refinishing cabinets we have to get this house finished up um, it's a rental property that my client purchased and the way the Lord led us into construction I told you all that we filmed a pilot with DIY but that's not how that's not the only way we were led into construction. That was one of the ways. The other way we were led into construction is because I would be trying to give jobs to, <clears throat> let me see if I want to do it that way, no, to contractors and people that I knew, and they would never call me back, right? I'd be trying to get estimates for my clients and trying to help, you know, spread money to people that I knew because if I know that someone does a great job and they're going to do a great job for my clients, then, you know, I want to give 
a way for them and their families to make an income as well. But look, people would never call back. They would never send the estimate or they said they were going to send the estimate and then never send it. And so the Holy Spirit told me one day, it's time for you to launch your construction division. And I was like, okay. So I talked to my husband about it because he had, we had already been, like I said, doing um, flips and doing properties. And my husband is super handy. And he said, okay, Garlinda, well, let's do it. So from there, I keep getting the glue stuck on my finger. <laughs> so from there, I offered the services to my clients and they said, okay, let's go for it. And so that out of necessity, our construction division was born. And so God is going to bless you, many of you out of necessity. Think about a business or an idea that you have and you don't see people doing it or you don't see them doing it well. And you're like, okay, there's a place in the marketplace for me because there's always a place for you. I don't know why I'm sharing this with you this morning, but I feel like the Lord is leading me to share this with you. There's always a place for your idea. There's always a place for your business. I'm going to use this medium-sized gold ones as well. Remember, I told you yesterday I felt like I wanted to use these. So that's what we're going to do. But um, there's always opportunity. You know, and what happens a lot of people get this negative Nelly mindset about, oh, you know, the economy's bad, people aren't working, blah, blah, blah. But millionaires are made during a recession. I had a mentor tell me that, and he told me that, and that's when I launched my real estate company. Praise God. I never looked back um, because millionaires are born during downtimes. So that is downtimes in the economy, downtimes like now during the pandemic are not the time to slink back. It's the time to step up. Glory to God. And so, again, I didn't get on here to preach to you, but I'm just sharing with you. Let it be confirmation to those of you that have been wondering, is now the time? Is now my season? Is this what I should be doing? God was the way. The Lord is saying, I've opened this window of opportunity for you. Take it. Glory to God. So, I'm going to go back and clean up the glue. Why didn't you do right? On this one. Let me get my pokey tool without hopefully messing up the camera. Let's see. Thing is never where I want it to be. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean up the glue. So we place this one. And of course I wanna line the diamonds up. So that's what I'm doing. You know, cause once they dry hit, we can't go and move it then. So I just wanna get the excess glue that's squeezed out and wipe it off. Y'all know one, another thing I'm missing <laughs> during the virus right now is um, sometimes we would ride out on the weekends, like just ride out of town. Um, Wilmington, North Carolina is one of my favorite places because it's down on the coast and we would just ride, go out to eat. They have um, some outdoor shopping areas. I don't like to shop, but I like going out, walking around with the kids. They would use their money to buy stuff for themselves. And, um, or I love Savannah, Georgia. That's one of our favorite places to go as a family. So I'm looking forward to summer break. I know y'all are. So because these are so small on the back and they're kind of faceted, I'm going to make sure to put a little bit of extra glue and I'm going to use the pokey tool to place them because they are easily sticking to my finger. So you can skip past this part. I'm just going to place the rest of the studs, then we'll be back to finish. Okay, so we are back to finish up these earrings. Look how they came out. I'll just show you how I glued on the findings on each section. I think they came out really pretty. Let's sit this up a little bit. And the bottom ones we just left, plain and simple. So you may hear my children in the background, they're warming up some nachos from last night. So let's go ahead and attach the findings. So what I'm gonna do is we're opening up our jump rings. I've already shown how to do this and putting on the fish hooks. Remember we said we needed a fish hook finding and I feel like the gold will look better on this pink, yellow and green background. So we're just gonna put the earring together. I added that little jump ring because I feel like it would give it more movement. Uh oh. And I think I'm going to add this from the back. I shouldn't be adding that from the front. Oh. Because when you add from the, I'm adding the jump ring from the back. I saw where it paused because my battery is getting low. 
because when you add from the front, it could scratch your design. So let's add from the back. So if it's just happened to scratch up the paint a little bit, we could always touch the paint up, okay? So here we are, we're just putting all the components together. You could use another pair of pliers to get those closer together. Ooh, I realize I'm gonna have to add a little jump ring in here too because those are pretty close together. So let's do that. And sometimes you don't realize these things, ow, until you go to put them together that poked me in my finger. So what I'm gonna do is just so we can lengthen the earring and it'll have a great hang because by us having the V points straight down. We just put an extender on there. I'm gonna go back and tighten all these jump rings after we get off video as well. And it wouldn't have poked me had I been using the other pair of pliers. Common sense would have told me that, right? but I just wanna keep adding the components because I know the video has been a tad bit long. And these are really light. I mean, they're not heavy at all. So we're just gonna keep adding. We should be able to add this bottom one without any challenges, but let me see. What I mean is by the V's sticking to each other, but it looks like it will. So let me grab another smaller jump ring because the one thing I think is really important for me for this earring is that it has like a really nice slinkiness to it, like a lot of swing. That's what I want. Set. Let's close this up. And then, cool, and we're gonna add the little one because I opened it up by accident. Let me tighten this by closing that up a little bit. Now we're gonna add a larger one back here. And so just keep in mind that when, if your earrings are too close together, they won't flow. They won't have like a nice swing. And I think, of course, that's just what makes it great, so. I was trying to make sure I was putting that face in the right direction. Look how pretty that is. So I'm gonna come back and show you the final design, but I think it turned out gorgeous. It came out looking like I wanted it to, but we'll be right back. I wanna put them on something so you can see them. Oh my gosh, are they not incredible? Love, love, love. Okay, so here we go. We finally finished these gorgeous earrings. Oh my gosh, they came out perfect, just like I wanted. Of course, I did hurt my fingers up a little bit. I think I needed more coffee this morning.